What's up, guys? Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome back to the channel. Whoops. Adjust that so you guys can see my, my black belt certificate that I got uh, sometime in June, right, this year. So I'm really proud of that. It took me eight years. Anyways, um, today we're going to talk about MMA versus Wing Chun. And Wing Chun won. But there's a little, you know, nuance here. It's actually... Jeff Chan's Wing Chun that won, okay? So we're gonna watch this video together and I'm gonna point out some things. Now, before we watch it, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna explain a little bit uh, beforehand um, when I watched the video, what came to mind so that it's going to give you guys, um, well, my thoughts on it and the takeaways that I think that you guys should uh, should take away from this. And then from there, when I watch the video, well, I'll just, you know, freestyle it and, uh, you know, crack some jokes. <laughs> By the way, I'm a big fan of Jeff Chan. I think he's, uh, I think he's great. You know, he's a pro guy, but pro, a professional MMA fighter. So he's been doing this for a long time. And yeah, so, okay, a couple of things. The takeaways, right? Actually, wait. So Jeff Chan, actually, he, he actually won this. And he made Wing Chun work, okay? He was able to make it work. And the takeaway here is that the reason why he was able to make it work is because he had, in my opinion, better fundamentals than Sifu Nate. And I, I've never heard of Sifu Nate before until I, I watched this video. And you guys will see what I mean. So in this video, I want you guys to notice the head movement. Okay, that Jeff Chan has, and then look at the head head movement that Sifu Nate doesn't have, or at least he's not demonstrating here. Then look at the footwork. Compare the footwork of Jeff Chan, and then compare uh, Sifu's Nate footwork. You're gonna see Jeff Chan's. Uh, you know he's, um, what's the word? Leagues above, miles above. You know what I mean? Like a lot better, right? I could be, I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe uh, Sifu Nate is, you know, injured or whatever, you know, busted ankle, knee, whatever, you know, and he's not able to perform the way he usually does. But I mean, he's a, he's a pretty athletic guy himself. And when you see at the beginning of the video, he's going to do like backflips and stuff like that. And he's doing jump kicks and yeah, he's doing um, um, all kinds of stunt, uh, stunting, you know, stunting kind of stuff, kicks and all. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And so the other thing that I want to point out to you guys is that when you watch a video like this, I'm thinking you have to you have to realize that sparring matters, man. And the thing is, Jeff Chan probably has a lot more sparring hours under his belt than Sifu Nate. Now, and there's also something else that I noticed when I watched the video is that even, even though Sifu Nate probably does spar, because you see in the background other guys sparring as well, they probably do spar at the club. But the problem is when you spar and you don't actually have good fundamentals, like you have two guys that don't have good fundamentals in boxing and striking and kickboxing and all that. And then they sparred using concepts that are really advanced, really. Um, they, they, they just can't make the advanced stuff work because they don't have the fundamentals. Okay. So that's my take on it. Um, ta, 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 ta. Yeah. And, and in my opinion, yeah, like I said, uh, Sifu Nate, I think has less, you know, uh, sparring experience, okay, than, than Jeff Chan. Like, he might have, but maybe not the same uh, caliber uh, partners, okay? Uh, what else? And here's the thing. They're both wearing gloves. So maybe in that regards, I mean, yeah, you know, like you could say that, yeah, in Wing Chun, if he had his hands, he'd be able to do stuff. But I don't think so. I think it would be the same thing. You know, like Jeff Chan does MMA. So he has four ounce gloves. Those are the, the smallest gloves you could have. And you have fingers and all that. So I think that it would have it looked pretty much the same um, if, if, that was, uh, if that was the case, if they were wearing four ounce gloves. Now, also, you notice that they weren't kicking. They were just doing, you know, hands. That's it. So I think that if... They actually implemented hands. It would have, <laughs> it would have been even more dominant for for Jeff. And so the point being, boys, is that I think combat sports should be done before traditional martial arts. And and then if you get your fundamentals down, okay, and the fundamentals, the basics, you know, practice at a high level, okay, master that at a high level, become advanced stuff. 
like there's you know it's it's the bread and butter like and then if you add tma your i think your tma is going to you're going to be able to use it you're going to be able to adapt it to your style your fundamentals and it's gonna you're gonna be able to make it work like jeff chan was able to make his wing chun work um in this uh in this instance mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what else was i gonna say yeah and that's the thing and if you do the opposite right if you do tma first so traditional martial arts first and then after that you go to combat sports I think that you're going to have a harder time. And one of the reasons for that is because psychologically, it's very hard to, you know, spend years studying a martial art. And then after that, go practice thinking that you have the tools necessary to, to deal with anything uh, that comes your way. And then you, you, you run into these uh, Jeff Chans of the world, you know, MMA guys who super like athletic, explosive, do a ton of sparring and then you're you know that you realize that man you can't pull out your stuff and some people will either make excuses that you know oh you know well it's because there's rules and this and that and you know like if there was on in the streets there's no rules and then some people will just get crushed by that and 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 just you know like stop practicing their tma and they might just stop practicing martial arts altogether, or sometimes they they might like uh, like Rokus, Rokus from um, um, what do you call it, uh, martial art journey. Like he he did a uh, you know he switched over to you know combat sports afterwards when you know he got you know so called uh, bad experience disillusioned by by Aikido. But that's the thing. I think that you should start with combat sports first, then TMA after, or in conjunction. OK, I think you could do if you have the time and all that. Yeah, because there's definitely a lot of value in both in TMA. But I think TMA, in my opinion, a lot of the stuff there, it's it's advanced, man. The concepts are advanced, you know, and you can't apply those things in real time in front of an opponent that that has the fundamentals. Like, like you can't unless you have those fundamentals, too, because there's videos out there of guys who who. Um, I think there's other videos of Jeff Chan fighting like uh, Jack Kandu guys and, and all. And those guys did very well, but you could tell like they know how to box. They know how to kick box. They know how to do tie boxing. They know how to check kicks. They have good movement. They, you know, like all of that good stuff. Right. And then after that, like the others, the TMA, you know, they'll, they'll take certain elements here and there and they'll apply it. Okay. Let's get to the video. Give me a second. I don't want to make this video too, too long. I always try to make these short, man, but guys, I, always fail all right wait let me check the speed on this son of a okay all right short video and um okay i'm going to kill the volume on this and i'm gonna press play all right let's go so that's see from nate look at that look at that he's athletic do all that crazy shit and of course, it's Wing Chun. I know this is a little bit just standing in front, not very well. I'm sure you can move in angles. Then you have Jeff Chan, you know, with his MMA thing and yada, yada, yada. They're about the same size. Uh, Jeff Chan looks a little bit leaner, more muscular, right? And uh, I'm sure Sifu Nate would, you know, if he, if he lifted a little bit more and uh, he'd be okay too. Look, he even has the Bruce Lee haircut. <laughs> I love it. Me too. Look, look, big Bruce Lee fan, right? I like the t-shirt though. So here we go. Boom, boom. And yeah. So they're playing, they're playing, which is good, you know, sparring, but look at how many times uh, Sifu Nate gets caught compared to Jeff. Now, the thing with Jeff is that he's, his head movement is amazing. So what happens is that he could keep his chin a little bit higher, but he knows where his hands are. He knows where his foot are. He knows how to get out of the way. Whereas you see right there, like look at how exposed uh, Sifu Nate is, right? And look how he drops his hands and all that while he's coming in. So, boom, you see? Yeah, his balance is off too. And I don't, what's with the shin guards? So that I don't get. Maybe they were doing kickboxing before. But he's getting tagged like boom, boom, like all day long. And you see Jeff Chan, look at this. Like he's 
he's actually off center, off center. He's always off center. So I think that that's a, a principle, if I'm not mistaken, guys, in in the in Wing Chun. You know, there's a center line and you gotta move. And Jet does an amazing job, even though he dips low and all that, but he knows exactly what he's doing. And like I, I would be afraid a little bit of the head kicks, but I mean he's been doing it for a minute, so he knows how to time that. Boom. But I, I will give credit to Sifu Nate in the sense that he does roll with his punches. Like, obviously, Jeff's not going. Both of them aren't going full uh, uh, full force. But <laughs> some of these shots, when I saw them land, I was like, eee. Look at that. Boom. You see? Parry. Boom. Oh. You see? Like, I imagine, guys, I'm a big fan of Bruce Lee and all that. But Bruce Lee might actually look somewhat like this if he came back. He popped back to life right this instant and sparred these guys at this moment in time. Now, of course, if you had time to catch up and to, uh, you know, brush up on the new tech, you know, the new techniques, the new this and that, that, uh, you know, guys have been working on and developing all these years, then, of course, you would, uh, you would do a lot better. But I think Bruce might kind of look like this, man. Well, obviously, with you know, well, he would have kicks, but if they were just doing the boxing thing, I think it would kind of look like this, man. And I'm not saying that to disparage Bruce Lee at all. I think you know I'm a big fan, and Bruce Lee is one of the reasons why I got into martial arts, and it was a big inspiration, and he still is till this day, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm just saying this is this is what it looks like if you just you don't have your fundamentals. It might have been an off day too. I'm, I'm just saying, you know. But look, look how much he's getting tagged compared to, to, to Jeff. You know, I don't know if Jeff has done any Wing Chun beforehand or not. But I mean, like his if if he has, then of course he, you know, he understands, um, you know, like how the Wing Chun guys do things and all that. But he di if he didn't, I mean, what you're seeing here is essentially him like, um, just kind of picking it up on the fly and understanding um, in real time, like what he has to do and what uh, Sifu Nate is actually uh, doing. Right. So it's pretty. Um, yeah. And look, you see, it's, that's the thing, man. Like if it looks, if it looks like crap, it probably is crap. And that's why it's, it's, it's good to film yourself guys. When you, when you do sparring and all that, I film myself all the time and that helped me improve a lot. And I'm still working on it. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm no Jeff Chan, but uh, I, I ain't, uh, I ain't no Sifu Nate. I, <laughs> like, I'm better than that. <laughs> At least in my humble opinion. Guys, sorry. Like, I know there's one of the tenets of judo is, is modesty or humility. And yeah, like, I'm, I'm not modest, but I am humble in the sense that I'll, I'll put the work in, you know, and, and I can admit when I suck. But I mean, if I, if, you know. I, I believe in myself, you know, and I believe in the skill set I have. And then, of course, when it's proven wrong, well, hey, it is what it is. And then you just go back to the drawing board and get better. Oh, he actually caught uh, Jeff there. <laughs> but you see, like, yeah, it's just it's just pure dominance, man. Like the angles and all that, like the setups. And yeah, that's the thing, man. You know, like that's and also you got to remember that Wing Chun, from my understanding, and I, I would I would take I would totally take up Wing Chun at one point, just for the fun fun of it, and to learn also right the principles. And I think I, I would be able to make it work. Um, I I could take some stuff and, and really incorporate it into my my uh, my game as well. And but because a lot of the Wing Chun stuff they do it and they're very uh, static, you know, and their stance it's it's like it's kind of for like closed space and really like the person has to stay there. But if the person has room to move around, and Jeff even said it in this video, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna take advantage of that, you know, Wing Chun guys just. Uh, it's developed for a close quarter combat, but he's going to hit and move, hit and move, stick and move, stick and move, boom, boom, angles, angles, you know, and it's tough, man. It's tough. So there you go, man. Wing Chun, Wing Chun for the win, guys. And it's Jeff Chan's Wing Chun, not, um, not Sifu Nate's. But so this is not a knock on Wing Chun at all. Like I, I used to make fun of TMA and all, um, but, you know, like I've, I've changed my mind on that. And I think that, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not a question of whether something works or not. 
it's a question of if you're able to make it work. But for you to be able to make it work, you have to have very solid fundamentals, very solid fundamentals, right? So solid fundamentals, like you have to understand boxing. You have to know, you have to be able to box. You have to be able to how to do kickboxing, Thai boxing, because you have to know how to clinch and, uh, you know, check kicks and all that and elbows, right? And then, yeah, like this is just for striking, right? If you, once you have that, then after that, you add in Wing Chun, it's going to be useful for like close quarter, right? Because sometimes like you're in a bar, you're up close with somebody like, bah, 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 like you're not going to hit, you know, you're going to jump back and start putting your hands up and yeah, let's go, you know, touch gloves. Like it doesn't work that way, right? So it has this place, but I think that first things first, and then after that, you, you tack it on afterwards. And that's it for this video, guys. What do you guys think? Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? And do you think that Jeff was uh, beat him with his Wing Chun? Or did he? I feel he did. You know, obviously his fundamentals are, are, are super solid. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'm interested. And uh, that's it for this one, guys. Peace.